Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting a semi-abstract urban landscape based on Central Park uh, with a sort of um, a loose skyline in front of the park itself. Um, I'm just doing this from my imagination and I'm just going to have a bit of fun and this should be suitable for beginners or intermediates. So if you want to paint along, then, then please feel free. I'm using Saunders Waterford um, cold pressed paper, a quarter imperial sheet. It's taped to my board. My board is at an angle of about 45 degrees, so the paint will run down and gravity will help me with the painting. I'm painting onto dry paper uh, with a nice rich mixture of yellow ochre. And I'm using this um, Chinese bamboo handled um, harky or flat brush, I think it is. Um, not really sure. I was curious about it when I saw it on AliExpress and I bought some a while ago. Um, but I'm afraid I don't have the link. But if you go on AliExpress, you can probably find something similar. So I'm leaving some patches of white paper and paler areas to give the sky sort of a misty look, I'm trying to keep it nice and rich across the top. Yellow ochre is a lovely colour. It's, it's, it's very rich and it's got this kind of almost sort of surreal glow to it and for that reason I like it for these semi-abstract urban skyline paintings. Just soften it a bit here and there. Got some nice rich paint across the foreground as well. And now I'm going to lay it flat so that the paint doesn't run down the page any more than it has. Um, I'm going to take my plastic store card and I'm going to run a few lines using the corner. I'm going to etch into the damp paint and run a few sort of like perspective lines or, or land lines to give me just a sort of a hint very subtly of the layout of the park in front of the sky, in front of the skyscrapers and tall buildings that I'm going to put in. I think that will do. I'm now going to leave it to dry completely. Well, it's now completely dry. It's a little bit richer than this in real life, but the sun's quite bright today coming in through the window. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is paint on um, a distant silhouetted tree line, just very loosely. This is my small um, harky brush made by Pro Art. It's a Ron Ranson harky brush and I'm using Payne's Grey. I'm using the tips and the corner of the brush to create these kind of tree line shapes leaving a couple of gaps here and there. Some slightly taller than others. I don't want them to be too tall though, because really they're just the sort of um, the mid ground, the distance, and the important part will be putting in the buildings and skyscrapers. This is my small squirrel mop and it's just damp and I'm using it to soften the edge underneath the trees. Some of the paint will sort of bleed back into that softened edge in places and just give me a nice transition of the trees into the parkland. And then just back with the harky brush to straighten out the bottom a little bit more. Just improving any tree shapes that I'm, I'm less keen on. I think that's a bit better. Now this is the corner of a card, this time a small piece that I've cut. And I'm running it through the thickest parts of the paint in the largest trees to kind of expose the clean white paper in a few places just to get some light glinting on maybe some trunks and branches. Nothing too much, just a little bit here and there. The next thing to do is to begin to paint in the tall buildings, the skyscrapers um, that, that make up a distant skyline. 
and for this I'm using Payne's grey but I've mixed it with a, an awful lot of water it's very watery it's just grey and I'm going to put in simple shapes using my uh, three quarter inch flat brush um, it's a Cotman flat brush and it's a really nice synthetic brush it's lovely to use and then once I've put in a couple of buildings I'm going to very quickly while the paint's still wet use my small damp squirrel mop and just blot out and soften across the bottom um, and hopefully in a, in a, when I've done a few more you'll be able to see that that effect will be like a sort of misty distance. Again um, putting in all different heights and sizes, widths and uh, different amounts of distance between some of the buildings too in this very pale watery grey and then softening the base sort of unevenly going up through into the buildings a little bit so it looks like this sort of rising mist so you can only see the top of the buildings faintly through the haze just smudge that a little bit still damp so I've cleaned it up again with a clean damp brush just smooth that out a little bit Try and keep my hand off the damp paint. I'm going to carry on now, working my way across the skyline. As I say, different thicknesses or widths and heights of buildings. At the moment, keeping them very blocky. You could probably find a photograph of Central Park and maybe copy sort of the simplified version of one of the skylines if you wanted something a bit more ac accurate but here I just want to you know, have fun and paint something something interesting um, urban but a little bit surreal and semi-abstract while the paint's still wet I've taken some very slightly darker paints grey I'm just going to drop it in on the edges here and there and allow it to softly diffuse and just hopefully give me a little bit of variation in the tone. I want these to be really nice and pale because they should then contrast, the building should contrast nicely with the really dark silhouetted trees and the rich yellow ochre and unpainted white paper of the sky. These sorts of flat brushes are often known as one stroke brushes and they literally do do exactly that. You can just use one brush stroke to create all manner of um, effects or things that need this sort of geometric shape. I think they're invaluable. I love my flat brushes. They're some, some of my favorite brushes, I think. Again, dropping in some slightly darker Payne's Grey here and there. As you can see, there's hardly any change in tone, but there's just enough to give it that little bit of variation and shade and shadow. The reason I'm stopping between, after I've done just a, a few blocky buildings and softening across the base is because the softening won't work as well if the paint is dry. So I'm making sure that I get my softening done while everything's still wet. I think you can see now that the mist rising behind or between the trees and the tall buildings is beginning to look quite effective. I've decided to just do one building with a sort of um, angled roof, like a tower. I think that makes it stand out from the rest, which are all going to be flat topped.
And because this is going to be the focal point, I'm going to put some slightly darker Payne's Grey into um, the wet grey paint. I don't want quite as much as that, so I'm going to soften it back a little bit. But I just want the eye to be drawn more to that shape than to the others, and that will be my focal point. Just a few more buildings to go and keep them a bit lower on this side. And I think I'm, I'm happy with that, so I'm going to let those buildings dry completely, then maybe put a few windows in later. So the next thing I'm going to do is with, with my small calligraphy brush is just put a little bit of detail along the tree line, a few trunks coming down a bit further so they look like the trees are a bit closer to us. And then maybe a few horizontal lines, just a little bit of something and nothing to show the sort of shadows under the trees, um, distant planes, that sort of thing few branches here and there and trunks. You notice that the biggest gap between those that tree line, the biggest gap is where I've placed my focal point skyscraper with the tower or the pointed roof and the eyes drawn to that large gap between the trees, hopefully. So this is just Payne's Grey. As I say, there's just yellow ochre and Payne's Grey in this limited palette painting, although I will use a little bit of, um, of white gouache at the end for some highlights. Back to this um, large bamboo flat harky brush. Just using the tips to add in a few more sort of um, little lines of bushes and things here and there. Just bringing them a little bit further forward. Not too far because I want to keep them, most of the mid-ground and the foreground very plain. The only thing I'm going to do to the foreground is to create a dry brush sweep across the foreground at a slight angle and that just breaks up the fact that the rest of the painting is mostly verticals and horizontals and will help, hopefully help lead the eye into the composition. Just softening with the clean damp squirrel mop underneath some of those marks. I've mixed up an even paler mixture of grey and behind the focal point tower or tower block um, I'm just going to put in a couple more buildings much much fainter. That just will help to give a little bit more depth, I hope. Again, softening these off, I'm going to sort of bring, use the flat brush just to bring the left side of this distant building down further into that sort of white cloud area there. I think that's enough. That just gives the look of the sort of layer there and a bit more mist just to soften it back. Now on to a few final accent details. Using the tips of the Harky brush and Payne's Grey again, I'm going to put in a few sort of um, poles, posts, aerial, aerials, um, that sort of thing. Just something and nothing to just add some more interest to the skyline.
most of this detail is what we call something and nothing. It, it, it's whatever you want it to be when you look at it and, and see the picture. I think having an aerial on top of the tower or a spire um, helps draw the eye to that as well. Now using my rigger brush I'm going to use the Payne's Grey again just to enhance a few of the trees, just a few branches here and there, not too much, and just strengthen up a couple of the trunks. You've got to be careful not to overdo it, just to put enough detail in to lead the eye to the buildings. Just going to dot up from that spire put a few little details and dots across on some of the um, those poles and posts and uprights. And then I'm going to dot in some windows on the buildings with the panes grey, quite pale and quite uneven. but making sure that I do bring them across in horizontal rows so they look like rows of windows and with some verticals too. But leaving some out so it doesn't become too regimented. I'll be leaving some of the buildings blank too. And now this is um, some white gouache, quite thick. I'm going to add a few highlights. Most important is that highlight on the top of the spire of the focal point tower and the windows. Work, so it looks like the light is just catching or glinting or you can see the lights on in the buildings. So I'm going to do the same across some of the other buildings with the white highlights and on some of the poles. So now some of those poles have become like lampposts, that sort of thing. Just little dots, and you could do this with a white gel pen if you prefer, it might be easier. or white acrylic ink or paint. If the white gouache dries back a little bit lighter, just go over it with a second coat to strengthen it up. I think my white gouache is quite thick. I think it's only going to need one coat. And that's it finished. Um, you could add more details, you could add some people if you like, but I quite like the emptiness of this without people. So I'm going to peel off the tape. Um, it's ordinary decorators masking tape and I'm just peeling that away, pulling it away from the painting so that if it was to catch it won't tear into the painting. And here it is, the finished painting with its clean white border. And I'm quite happy with that. I like sort of black and this sort of golden yellow together. I think they're very striking for these sorts of semi-abstract landscapes. And if we zoom in, you can see the, the shapes are very, very simple for our buildings. There's not a lot there. It's just thinking carefully about, about keeping the shapes geometric and keeping the tones really light in the distance with that misty base of the buildings, which then gives us a sense of distance, scale and recession against the silhouetted trees. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon then. Bye.